Welcome back to Lehigh River Subdivision, Ian here. Uh, today we're going to do an unboxing, uh, but first we're going to give a little history on why we're doing the unboxing. So, right here I have this, these are the easement curves. Um, it's the only way you can do the S-bend in this double track because of the curved banks. So if you wanted to do an S-curve, it's two easements instead of uh, like down here. You see I have one easement piece into a full piece back into an easement to go from the super elevated back to flat. So I want, the way I want my gorge to lay out the river, I want to come through here and I want a bridge here. So I came across these bridges and I had asked a while back and nobody seemed to leave a comment so I kept looking and looking and looking and couldn't find these on anybody's layout anywhere and I couldn't find anything on the internet and forums so I just bit the bullet and ordered. So what we have, I already opened the box, is six bridge pieces so I'll lay these out these three are the 481 millimeter which is the outside curve on the double track and these ones here are the 448 which is the 17 inch and 5 8 which is the inside curve on the double track. And then uh, the, out, the outside one is 19 inch. So I went ahead and ordered three of each. And I ask why three? Well, the two easements together create a 45 degree section of curve. So, math wise, 315s equals 45, so I figured I'd need three of them to replace the curve. So, I went ahead and ordered them, and uh, I'm going to take them out here and put them together. And we'll see if it lays and matches up that I can take that easement out and put this bridge in the location that I want. Okay, I took the 19 inch curve uh, deck trestle out. So they come with these unijoiners that are half unijoiners. And the reason for that is because you're going to have to take one of these and put it into whatever piece comes into this bridge. Because you can see they have these half ones. And I don't know the reason for that. It must have something to do with the bridge design itself. So we're just going to move along and look at the detail uh, for a pre-made bridge. I really, really like this one compared to the other Cato bridges. And then we'll come down along the side. It has really, really, really nice detail. And then I'm just going to flip it upside down. They do have their own pier system for this that locks into this. Um... I really think I'm going to go with that route instead of making my own bridge abutments for the center piers because I think it would just be easier to get the ones that lock in here because it's going to support it better because if you see when I lift this up it kind of bends away so that piece that goes in there probably helps with locking so I found them for like I think 10 bucks under 10 bucks ship so I'm going to go ahead and order those um, but I'm going to get the other one out and we'll take a look at that Okay guys, uh, I got the other one laid out, the inside curve, and this is uh, what it would look like. You got the three pieces, comes right into the double track straight. And I think this is going to be a really nice bridge. I really like this setup. So I'm going to take this and set it on top of the curve to see if it's going to line up and work in that situation. Okay guys, this is where I want the bridge to go and if we take a look you can see right there 
Uh, that's where the curve connects up to the straight. And the bridge is lined up right there. And then when we come over to the other side, there's the uh, straight where it connects to the curve. And these bridges will line up and they will work. So, anyone else that's using this double track, if you've seen these bridges, if you want to replace a 45 degree curve, you'll need three of these bridges because the curves for the double track only come in the easements are 22 and a quarter or 22 and a half for one and the, you need the two of them because the super elevated for 45 so almost every as bend on this layout is 45 degrees because of that reason of it of the way the easements are and they're not being shorter pieces available so I'm really happy that I'm going to be able to put this bridge in like this um, because this is the bridge right below Whitehaven and it's sort of similar to this, uh, a little different but it'll be close enough and I just really like the way these bridges look and the detail is great. And uh, I just wanted to make a video of this for anybody else that may be interested because I could not find any info on these. Um, they do sell it in a kit on Walders' website and some other places that I found where you get four pieces. So I believe you get two of the inside, two of the outside, and you get the piers. But if you're in the double track... Which these radiuses on these bridges are the same exact ones for the biggest set of double track, which is the four four. What is it? The double track is four four forty eight is the inside curve, and then four eighty one is the outside curve, and that's the biggest uh, curve radius they make in the double track. And they don't even make single track, I don't think, in this radius. So, I don't know why they didn't make these in 45 degrees or 22 and a half. But, they made them in 15 degrees. So, if you want to replace one of these S-bends with one of these bridges on double track, you're going to need three pieces anywhere you would decide to do it. Or you could even make the bridge bigger if you want to, like, if I wanted to do this whole section here in a big curved bridge, you could do it because you would have 45 there and the two 45s. You would need six, six on each side, so you need a total of 12 bridges to make that whole bend to be a bridge. But those are some options you can do with uh, these curved bridges as if you're working with. Uh, the coddle double track in the 19 and 17 and 7 8 uh, radius. So just a little update on these. Uh, thanks for watching.